Aloha. I am so happy to be bringing to you Jessica Ayers today, known otherwise known as the Singing Widow. Uh, she is so entertaining. I just love to watch her Instagram. And if you're not following her yet, you need to. You'll really enjoy it. So she's the Singing Widow at Instagram. Is that how yes. to? Okay. Uh, Jessica, can you introduce yourself to us? Hi, I am Jessica Ayers. Um, I am a widow for going on eight years now, seven years, and um, I'm a mom and PTSD survivor and um, just widow, I guess, um, kind of guider, helper, um, coach, all of the above. Well, I, I love how you do it. You um, On your Instagram, you post these just delightful um, I don't know exactly what you'd call it. Um, well, they're really delightful posts. <laughs> what inspires you to do that? Or how do you get your ideas for the posts that you, you come up with? Um, well, I mean, I really, I've, I've heard a lot of people on, you know, TikTok or Instagram say that they kind of like come up with their, all their ideas ahead of time. Um, and, and, and I kind of do that a little bit, like I'll kind of, if I come up with an idea while I'm driving down the road or whatever, you know, I'll jot it down. Oh, this would be a good idea for a post. Um, but then I usually just kind of let, I pick my audio first and I usually let my audio just kind of guide where I want to go with that video. And sometimes I'll kind of make it, I'll think I'm making one, it, you know, one way and it'll turn out to be something different. So it's really just kind of all how I feel inspired. Yeah, all, all of her posts, uh, or almost all of her posts, include videos that are, are really entertaining, where she takes um, music that has, you would probably think one way about it when you usually hear it, and she kind of flips it <clears throat> into a way that um, makes it relate to feelings and things that are going on. And I, I think what I like is it, it not makes me not take myself quite so seriously. Yeah, I think that I think that some of my videos have been taken the wrong way from some people. They're like, well, this isn't funny or whatever. But, you know, I'm just like, you know, we need to lighten up. I mean, grief is really dark. And if we can't just kind of um, use creativity to navigate our way through it, you know, that, that's really been my, my biggest thing that, that has kind of helped me move through it is being creative. And um, so I just think, you know, I don't think grief's funny at all, um, but I do think there are funny aspects that kind of surround grief. And there's some things that can be funny, you know, that not everything has to be just so dark and sad all the time. Uh, I, I think you've really got something there because it, so many times when people are dealing with grief or loss, they're focusing on, on everything that's sad. And there, there's a lot to be sad about there. But when you get stuck there, it makes it so that you're not really living your life and you're not taking good care of yourself. And I think self-care is, is probably the most important things for widows to to be aware of or for anybody dealing with loss because when when you can't take care of yourself you can't do anything else really either that's that's the primary thing it's it's that old thing of the flight attendant attendants telling you to put the oxygen mask on you first um, because you really can't do anything else if you're not breathing and it's my my whole focus on on dealing with loss is that you can be happy and it's okay to be happy and you can be sad about your loss and happy about your life at the same time yeah i really think that um it's it's hard in the beginning to be happy about a lot i mean i was in a very dark place for a few years um and I think that um, coming out of that really dark place has really helped me gain a lot of knowledge and hopefully a lot of wisdom to help other people who might be there because I really know what it's like to just feel like you have absolutely no hope or no care left in the world. And it's really hard to, you know, if you feel that way, it's really hard to hear 
you're going to feel better one day, you know, because I remember I was told that and I was like, no, I'm not. I'm always going to feel like this, you know? Um, so that's why I really try to find a balance between, you know, it, it's not always happy. And, you know, there is still a lot of darkness and sadness we live with, even when we find a way for grief and happiness to coexist. Um, but that's what they do. You know, grief is just, it's happening all around us and it's happening forever and it's not going to go away. One of the things uh, <clears throat> I'd like to ask you about it, you're married again, right? Yes. Uh, that was one thing after my first husband that died, died. Um, I, I just said, there's no way I'm ever going to get married again. You know, I had a, had a really good relationship and I, I can't go through this again. And so I just, I wouldn't even think about anything having to do with marriage. And in a way that, that kind of uh, helped me foster my sadness as opposed to help me get to feeling any better. And I, I was making no attempt to meet anybody or go out and do things or, or whatever. And finally a friend just kept kind of nudging me and, and pushing me forward and saying, you, you got to do something. She said, you're too, you're too young to just sit alone for the rest of your life. And yeah. then go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you no, were done. That, no, that's okay. Um, for me, I, you know, I had been with Justin since I was 14 years old. Wow. So getting, you know, at 31 years old, now I'm a mom and a widow. I, I just felt like I was 14 again. You know, I was like, I don't know how to date. I don't know. Justin was my like only boyfriend. He was not my only kiss, but I was a virgin when I got together with Justin. So he was the only man I had ever been intimate with. And so it was just such a surreal thing for me. Um, but I did know that I believed in love so much that I wanted to find love again. It was important for me. Not all widows feel that way. Some of them feel like, oh no, I'm done. But I knew I was only 31. I had a newborn son and I wanted to find him a father figure for his life. So it wasn't only about me. It was about me and it was about my son. And it was about creating a family for, you know, the both of us um, through hopefully finding um, a new husband. And, you know, I wasn't really ready until about two years later. Um, and, you know, I, <laughs> I did not really enjoy the dating aspect of it all. Um, but uh, I ended up finding Dawn, who was somebody I actually knew for a long time and was just acquaintances with. Um, and it, yeah, we just, we just hit it off and you know, the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> That's so wonderful. I, I think it's um, being open, you know, deciding that, and, and the thing that you said that I, I, it really resonated with me is the love aspect. There's no reason for us to deny ourselves of love, especially when you've had a, a wonderful relationship with whoever it was that died and you you cherish that relationship and you can still have that relationship you still can carry that person in your heart and and your heart's bigger than that you can love more than one person i've, I've had people ask me about that before when they they say well you know i i feel like i'd be betraying him or his memory or whatever because you can't love more than one person at a time and i'd say how many children do you have you know that's a wonderful example. And, you know, I think that for whatever reason, there's this stigma with widows, you know, not even as much for widowers, um, mm -hmm. everyone's pushing a widower to get back out there. But with widows, it's like, you know, they don't think that it's okay for them to find love again, because they think that it's being disrespectful to their late spouse. But no one would ever question a parent who lost a child who wanted to have another child. You know, you're not replacing that child that you lost. You're just bringing another life into your life. And that's how I feel about, you know, finding love again and finding love after loss is, you know, 
Justin is the love of my life, you know, and I, I still do believe that. And Dawn, I do feel like is also the love of my life. You know, I don't feel like there just has to be one or the other. And I think that that's something we need to really try to work hard on educating people on. And that's what I try to do a lot of. That's so important. Yeah, we, we don't question when, when people have two children or three children or four children and we don't say, oh, well, which one do you like best? You know, <laughs> it, it just doesn't work that way. There's, there's uh, it, love is such an important part of life. It's, it's an important part of what makes us happy, what, what makes us tick that it's it's so wonderful to love and be loved and that's that's always my my primary purpose I think in life is to to love and be loved unconditionally yeah and my wedding vows to dawn I said we wrote our own vows and I said um I believe that our heart's capacity to love is limitless oh. you know you just can't love I, I love my some of my friends like they're my you know, like they're my sisters or like they're part of me. You know, I, I have so much love for all the people in my life. And yeah, you do have the people that are your number one or your number two, you know, usually your children and your spouse. Um, and so I just think that for us to limit ourselves on how many people we can love, you know, that we're just, we could be missing out on, you know, something greater. I can't, I can't imagine what life would be like right now if I hadn't been open to finding love again. This is such an important conversation because it, it's something that a lot of times people who are dealing with loss don't want to have this conversation or they're not ready to have this conversation. And I remember uh, a, a couple of my diff different friends told me that I needed to write a gratitude list. And I said, I don't have anything to be grateful for. My husband died. And when I, when I finally realized that that's not the only part of my life, that there's a whole lot more out there and that I had to broaden my perspective, it, it, it was such a relief. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I am a self-proclaimed, I was, I was dark, like I was bad. Like if you were to see me back in the day, you would have never thought that I would turn out to be someone who's trying to inspire people um, because I was about as dark as it gets, you know, it was, it was really bad for me. And um, it was really, you know, I, I really worked hard to get myself out of that major funk that I was in because, you know, I hate to use my son as, as my inspiration, you know, because there are widows out there that don't have children and, I feel for them, you know, I, I can't imagine not having my son and having lost Justin. Um, in some ways, it would have been a more difficult road um, because I would just have nothing to show for all those years we spent together. Um, so I am thankful that I did have my son. I believe I still would have, you know, eventually found a way to, to be happy again and, and to move forward with life. I just don't know how I, it would have looked without my child. And that's true. I had uh, my, my children were mm, like junior high school age at, at the time that I was um, that I met. Well, when I when I met Jacques and it, it was kind of a challenge having somebody new in their lives. And they became so close to Jacques. Really, it was a really important relationship for them. My son even changed his, his last name so it would be Jacques' last name because they were so close. Wow, that is very special. Yeah, I Jax was so small, my son Jax. Um, so I kind of had a little bit of a cushion there. Um, <laughs> It wasn't like, um, you know, I still did keep some distance between Don and Jax for a little while, but, you know, I was like, he's not going to remember this, you know, um, but now it's like, I'm so glad that he was, you know, he basically has been in Jax's life since Jax was two years old wow. and Jax just remembers him as daddy. You know, he, he's not really missing anything in that aspect. And for the 
for the mothers of older children where their child actually has to mourn the loss, you know, it's just, it, it's so heartbreaking, you know, it's a, it's a different situation. So in some ways, you know, we were a little cursed in the fact that Jack's never got to know his real father. He just has no memories of him. So that's really sad. But in another way, it's kind of almost better because he doesn't really have to mourn that, that life and, you know, in his life. That's true. And you, you can always still have, have him be a part of it. Uh, his son's life by the, all the beautiful memories. And, and fortunately, you're at a, a, a place where it can be positive and happy and, and beautiful for him. So that those are the memories that he doesn't have the actual memory because he was so, so little that uh, he would know what his dad was like through your eyes. Oh, yes. I mean, we talk about Justin all the time. Um, it is not a it's not a taboo thing in our house. You know, Justin's pictures are everywhere. Anytime, uh, you know, a situation comes up that I want to share a story with Jax, I share it. You know, Don enjoys hearing the stories as well. He knows that that is the person who created Jackson. He knows that's the person who had life not gone off the rails should be here. So he gives respect to that, you know, and I think that's also very important, you know, as a remarried widow, of a especially one with children to find a spouse that respects you know that ongoing relationship you still have trying to keep their memory alive you know for your children it is really important i know when when uh, ron and i were together early um he said something one day about my ex-husband and i said oh wait a minute <laughs> He's, he's not my ex-husband. He's my husband who died, and you can refer to him that way. And it it really bothered me when he first said it. And then when I looked at it, it I thought, well, it's it's because he he wants me, he wants us to be our relationship without Jacques being in the relationship with us. So it just it opened my eyes to let me know that we really needed to talk about all that. And, oh and yeah, have absolutely. an understanding. <laughs> yeah, it's very important, you know. And I think it takes a special person to love a widow, you know, after they've lost, you know, someone. And um, you know, I praise all of those, <laughs> all of the secondary spouses, you know, the ones that came after, because you know we're we're a tough we're a tough breed. <laughs> Yeah, and and there are a lot of, of really cool people out there, not not just guys, but women who marry um, men who've lost their their wife. I can think of somebody I know now who had she had two young children when she died, and her husband was so devastated, and he was also such a loving loving person, and I'm sure that she's in his heart forever for sure. But I was really pleased when I could see that he was open to love again and somebody else could kind of complete their family so that they could have more love and more joy in their lives by, by that. Yes, and I, I have had quite a few um, significant others or girlfriends or spouses of those who are in a relationship with a widower reach out to me and say, thank you, you know, watching you and watching your journey as being on the other side of it and being the female and then me being on the other side of it is really helpful, you know, and helping me be supportive and be that supportive, you know, person who came second. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I never thought of, of um, Ron as being less than you know, the, the relationships were both wonderful and they were as different as they could possibly be. And, and that was great. <laughs> yeah, mine are the same way. You know, I, I married two completely different men, which is, is mind boggling to me sometimes that you can love someone that's just polar opposite of the person. But I do enjoy the little tidbits of things that kind of pop up, pop up here and there, you know, um, because you are a different person after loss, but your quirks and your kind of personality traits kind of stay with you. So um, I've caught Dawn kind of 
teasing me about the same things that Justin used to tease me about. And, you know, I just, I really enjoy those little moments because I feel like, I know it's weird, but sometimes I get to see like a little bit of kind of that relationship come back out in, you know, with what me and Don have sometimes. That's so cool. Um, I, I was just thinking of something and I'm, I, when I talk to somebody as fascinating as you, I've got all these different things going on in my head at the same time. And I start to speak and go, okay, which, which was it? <laughs> you know, what was I going to say? Um, I wish that I could just show an example of one of your, your Instagram posts. Um, do you do TikTok too, or is it just Instagram? I have a TikTok, but, and I have a couple videos on there, but I haven't really devoted my time to TikTok yet. I will be doing TikTok um, after I publish my book, which I'm working on right now. Um, You know, just to, and it'll probably be a little different than what I do. What I don't want to do is have the same thing on both platforms. I feel like if I'm going to devote time to, to the other one, it needs to be a little different. So that's good. So tell us about your book. Um, so I've been writing a memoir for a long time, um, you know, since I would say two years after, um, but I'm still trying to work on getting that one traditionally, traditionally published, um, trying to work on an agent and all of that. But I've decided for the time being, I've always wanted to write like just a survival guide for widows. Um, and I know there's quite a few out there, but I just kind of have my own kind of take on things. And, um, so that's what my book's going to be. It's going to be, it, it started out as being like surviving your first year. Um, and then I was like, no, um, we'll just kind of make it surviving widowhood. Um, so um, still working on the title, but it'll just kind of be a survival guide. I don't, I don't call it like a healing guide or, you know, how to get over your grief uh, because there's none of that, but you just really have to survive for a while. Um, and I, I feel like I have some, some good suggestions. And I think it's also just kind of good for people to be able to relate to something that somebody else is going through at the same time, you know, um, that helped me a lot. That's so wonderful. I know I, when I started reading things after Ron died, I was trying to read like anything that I could find. And I was looking for, sorry, um, help, help, you know, support in what I was going through. <clears throat> and I, I, I found memoirs, beautiful memoirs, interesting, fascinating memoirs, but it wasn't what I was craving, what, what I really felt like I, I needed to have. So when, when my book turned out to be what it turned out to be, that, that loving and living your way through grief, um, I've got something in every chapter that, that the people who are reading it can do that's going to help them and support them. And I've gotten really good comments on that because people say that's, that's what we need is somebody to, to show us there's, there's hope to show us that there's things that we can do. And it sounds like that's, that's what your book is doing. Um, I, I think that that it has tremendous potential and with your wonderful positive attitude that, that is displayed in, in your, uh, their Instagram posts. I, I just really love that. I, I would think that with all the followers you've got, you've got kind of a built-in audience and you should do quite well with that kind of a book. I'm, I'm excited about that. Thank you. I'm really excited. My goal is to have it published and out in the world before I give birth because I'm pregnant right now. <laughs> oh, congratulations. That's so exciting. So, thank you. I'm due in July. So, um, I'm hopefully going to get the book out there by the end of May. Um, Justin's death anniversary is in June. And so I feel like it's absolutely no coincidence that my book is going to be kind of ready and be there to be promoted um, during the month of June. And it's also kind of weird that it's right before I'm going to have a, another child. So um, I just say there's no coincidences in life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, the, the journey toward getting something published is, is not, uh, not quick or easy, but it's, it's worth it when you get good support to help you through. Absolutely. I'm really enjoying it. I just love writing and, um, 
it's been my passion since becoming a widow. And that's something I try to, like, I do have a, um, I kind of call it a coaching program where I kind of help widows um, if they want to kind of write their, their, their life, you know, or their healing through grief, um, right to heal. Um, because that was really what saved me um, with starting my blog. And so, you know, that's what I, that's kind of what I do. Um, or I kind of do that through my Instagram page and I have a link they can click on if they want to work with me and do all that, because it was really what helped me. And I know we all are different, but you know, I say, why not try it? Uh, writing helped me more than anything else. Uh, that's, that's what I do. I, um, teach writing at the university level after many, many years. And my first books were college textbooks that I wrote. So it just, when I started trying to put things together and figure things out, I started writing about them and it helped me so much that I started teaching other people to write too. And, and they're just thrilled with it. I, I think it's one of the best ways to deal with grief and the more different ways they can figure out how to do it, the better it is. So I, I'm excited that you're doing that because it's so helpful for people. I think it's really helpful for people to be able to see something, you know, you, we feel so much and when you can act, you're just like, what do I do with these feelings? You know, when you write them down and you can actually read through them, it's just, it's just like grounding, I think. I think so too. I, I know we, we will have so many, like we'll get stuck in an idea and it'll just bounce around in our head and get to the point where it can almost dominate our lives. And the more you write about it, the less it is in your head. It, it you know, doesn't necessarily go away forever, but, it, it, but it, there's a, a process of dealing with something by writing it down that makes a huge difference so that you can go on to the next thing instead, instead of staying on that hamster wheel, wheel of thinking the same thing over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been an absolutely wonderful talk. I, I just think that you're, you're doing such a great thing for, for people. Uh, I love uh, laughter and smiling and happiness and your posts often, I just smile. I, I frequently have the, the sound turned off when I'm going through Instagram, but when I see you, I turn it up so I can see what you're oh, up to. You. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here with me today. And I will have all of your information in the show notes so that people can contact you for whatever they want. And who knows, maybe there's a, some book agent out there looking for a really great book to work on and yours would be perfect. So never know. Yeah, yeah I never know. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here. I'm, I'm so glad we could talk today. And to my audience, I'll, I'll see you next week with some more loving and living ways to deal with your life. Thank you.